Hello everyone. I hope every, everyone is doing well. Today we are going to talk about earth grid resistance value minimum requirements. In the recent weeks I received large number of inquiries about the acceptable earth grid resistance value. So I decided to just have a high-level presentation to explain to people or to viewers the requirements under the standard. I tried to focus on the medical system a little bit because large number of people asked about the requirement for them for the hospital, for a medical center, for medical laboratory therefore i used part of this presentation to advise or to recommend some of the resistance and values before we go i would like to introduce earthing system or what's known as a grounding grounding or earthing system it's driven by two major elements. Number one is safety. Number two is operation. Because safety always comes first priority. So earthing and grounding play a critical role to ensure a safe working environment and a safe operation when it comes to electricity. Also, the earthing system or grounding, it's a critical to achieve the required or adequate operations is always maintained. People often assume that any object that touching the ground or any metallic object that exiting the ground or half of it buried into the ground, it's safe to touch. It's not the case. People need to be very, very careful that sometimes a fence, this is the ground level. There's a fence. Even the fence post is under the ground. If you touch the fence, there could be an electric shock. Earth play an important role when it comes to protections. So whenever there's a fault, the protection must operate. The earthing system ensure an advanced and a fast protection operation. It will support or it will help to reduce the risk of any fatality under electric shock. And all these are governed by IEEE and IEC standard, and you will see later on how many standard requested a detailed and adequate earthing system for the projects and all this when it comes to safety things will depend on our body impedance and a foot impedance these are lists of some some of the list of the standard and now this is changed uh, the year look at guys how many standard Govern. These are IEEE standard. See, large number of standard that target wide range of areas, and also there is a similar in IEC. There is a similar in Australian New Zealand standard. There's a similar list of British standard, but the majority, all of them, they come to meet at one point when it comes to safety. Now, a quick history. That earthing system was introduced in 1800. It was introduced because of telegraph. The telegraph used to communicate two wires. These two wires used to have an induced voltage on it. So they required a large number of receiver, repeaters, and high level of maintenance. In 1836, they found that they can send the signal, one signal, and if they put a proper earth, we could have the signals goes back from the earth. This approach changed the way 
tele, uh, the way telegraph receivers. Now, what we can do is, as an engineer, we took this and we say, hold on a second. Why do we need to take two wires, live and neutral? So what we start doing, we start sending one line and the return, we make it go back from the ground. In the early 20th century, when they start using the electric machine, the electric machine, it's a three phase. They have a lot of zero sequence, a lot of unbalanced system, a uh, lot of facility, a lot, lot of fatality happen, fire happen, damage happen. After they convene all the science researchers, they found and they came back that good ground is considered the ultimate need with this the legacy began of an earthing system. What's a recommendation? I hope that that was a good uh, quick introduction to show the, the, the large number of standards that address this issue. A quick history, the earthing system uh, since 1800s. Now, the recommendation for earth grid resistance under different conditions. Sensitive equipment, recommendation to have a less than 5 ohm. Substation, high voltage substation, less than 1 ohm. Let me get this done. In more details, in a substation, because depending on the level of the fault, the location of the substation, uh, does the, the, how many transmission lines there is in, does the transmission line have an overhead earth wire or optic fiber ground wire? Is it cable? Does it have a continuous screen? All this information, this, you could, be, you could, you could have to drive it down to 0 0.2 ohm. Maybe you could have to drive it down to 0 0.1 ohm to meet your earth potential rise, your step and touch voltage. So when we say less, less doesn't mean that say you have to stop at this point. If you achieve, for example, 0 0.99. No, you don't stop at 0 0.99. You have to, for a substation or for all the system, you have to go back and do the step and touch voltages. You have to do the transfer voltage. You have to check the transfer, uh, the return through the screen of the cable, through the overhead earth wire, and so on. Uh, if you if you check my other videos regarding the substation earthing, the current injection test, the full potential, you will get to see uh, more in details. Now, under lightning, it's recommended to have a less than 10 ohm, for example, for a, a transmission pole and so on. Also, this depends on the soil resistivity. If the soil resistivity is very high, it is acceptable under certain standard to go up to 30 ohm. So we have to be very careful when we address it. It's not a one-point one system. However, if you have a sensitive equipment, if you, if you make a sensitive equipment, you have to go down maybe to 5 ohm for, for lightning system. So also, these values, we cannot say that this is the value. And as soon as I achieve this value, I achieved my duty as an engineer. No, you have to go even more. Now, for a house... Depending on the type of connection for the house, but usually the single electrode must be less than 25 ohm. If it's not, they usually put two ohms, two electrodes in parallel, and uh, to achieve uh, the 25 ohm for, for, for a house. Now, before we go any further, I would like to distinguish between two types of earthing. Earthing or a grounding system. You have the earth grid for operation purposes which is also known and under many uh, standard or many uh, uh, avenue as a functional earth. And you have a protection purpose. Protection purpose, that means it will protect me from a shock. Operation purposes, it needs just for the system to operate if there is a heavy EMC, you know, interference. So, or any other uh, resonant you want to you wanna, you wanna remove. So we have to distinguish between the two elements. The function, the function uh, earth grid, maybe it could have a higher value or lower value depending on the system or the equipment. For a medical system, such as x-ray, ultrasound, life support, operational earth is an essential. You must have an operational earth. In many other appliances, you don't have to. You don't have to have it. Now, for equipment that's not, not in the intensive care, 10 ohm is acceptable. However, personally, personally, I recommend 
to have five ohms. But standard, some standard they call for 10 ohms, so you have to check. Also, even if you put 10 ohm or 5 ohm, you still have to do your due diligence to check the manufacturing spec, to check what's the requirement, the policy in the country that you're working under. Now, for a sensitive equipment located in intensive care, you must have less than 2 ohm is required. This is a standard. Now, also, when you get the 2 ohm, get the specialist to do a couple of tests. When they do the testing, they will tell you, we might need to reduce it a little bit. Okay? Now, please note, these for the hospital are operational earth, not protection earth. So please keep this in mind. Under IEEE, under, sorry, under IEC standard, you have, they have a three group of classifications. So whenever you do your earthing system for the hospital, please, please, Check under which category, which group you are working under, because each one will have a uh, separate requirements. I will prepare a separate uh, videos regarding this requirements in details. However, I put this. I found it. Uh, I found it that contain good informations, so maybe uh, it will be helpful to read it as well. Now, how to measure an earth grid? That's where the critical path path, because we went. We installed an earth grid, we installed a multiple electrode, multiple mesh connected together, and so on. How do we go ahead and measure it? Now, there are two popular methods. Number one is a fault potential test, which is all known as a three probe test. And number two is a current injection test. Now, usually current injection tests, they use it in a more complex scenario where step and touch voltages is required to be measured, not only the earth grid. However, you can use it for an earth grid system, measurement of the resistance. Now, before we end this uh, presentation, I would like to discuss in details these two, these two methods. So for the fall of potential uh, test earth grid, what, what the system does is, what the system does, you will have you'll have a voltage, you have a current injected, and you have a measurement of the voltage. Now, this electrode, this earth grid system, because it will have an influence of earth potential rise grading. So you need to make sure that this P, it's not within the influence of this one. That's why if I look at the measurements, if I look at the actual measurement of it, the measurement of it goes up straight in this. This elements, these elements under here, this is a position of the pole, this is a distance from the electrode, distance D. This location, it's affected of the earth potential rise of the earth grid because there is a EPR, Earth Potential Rise, it's equal to I times R. R is the resistance. And it goes straight. In this area, P is located outside the influence zone. When it comes to this area, it goes up. Why? Because as you can see, this will have, when you take them through the mesh loop, when you take it through a mesh loop, what is happening is you add them together. You will add together this voltage and this voltage. That's why it goes up. So you will take it through this point. So it's a critical for the full potential rise to be located. Usually, usually, this distance will be multiple times the size of your earth grid. And usually this will be located at 62% of LC. So keep this in mind when you want to do it. And this one, the, locate, the distance LC, it will be multiple time. However, I have a, I put a link of a, a previous work that's been done. If you want to check it, if you need more information also, we can explain things in details. Now, when it comes to current injection test, what's a current injection test? Current injection test, if you have a large earth grid system,
what will happen is I need to inject a current far away. I'm talking about large. So this could be in a hundreds of meters. Hundreds of meters. I need to inject current at an offset frequency, usually at 53 hertz. To avoid having a clash with the harmonic frequency at the 50 hertz. And then I need to measure the electrode system at a 90 degrees. I go 90 degrees and I put the voltage probe. And the voltage probe, I put it at a distance. This voltage probe, I put it at a distance until it goes like this, until it goes flat. This is a distance D, and this is the voltage that I'm measuring. So I keep increasing the distance until it goes flat. What does it mean goes flat? Every, again, every single substation has a resistance R. When you inject, when I am injecting into here current I, the current goes back, goes into here. This has a resistance. In here, I have an APR, earth potential rise, which is equal IR. This IR, this electrode system, will have a radius voltages. So what's, what's the voltage? The voltage, as we know, it's a difference in a potential. So you want to go this potential, you want to go to zero to physically actually get the actual voltage. That's why you have to go, keep going until you get to a flat voltage level. That means this is your acceptable system. To conclude, earth grid is an important element to ensure safety and adequate operation of electric system. It's important to determine the type, to determine the type and level of protection required. It's important to measure the earth grid resistance to verify what you've done is acceptable and always consult a professional in this domain because it's a very critical, especially when it comes to safety. Operation, maybe the system doesn't operate, the machine will stop, fair enough, but when it comes to safety, it could cause damage to human or fatality. Thank you for listening and see you next lecture.